Hi, my name is Cassidy Williams, and I'm a software engineer and developer evangelist at Clarify. Now, um, I'm here to give you a brief intro to the Clarify API, as well as introduce you to the company and kind of talk about the cool things that you can do with your projects. So, Clarify is rad. I'm very biased, but it's true. Um, and this is our website. So you can go to clarify.com and actually see what our technology can do. And um, this is kind of our little demo right here. So what I can do is I can choose a file and I'll just choose a random picture on my machine. Let's just say uh, a picture of Beyonce. I'll click I'm not a robot. There's a CAPTCHA. Sorry about that. And then it shows these pictures. Now it doesn't show that it's specifically Beyonce and Jay-Z, but if you'll notice it says two people, recognition, adult, facial expression, singer, what? Uh, women music, all kinds of stuff like that. And it's really cool because we basically can teach your computer how to see. And um, we can get tags for almost anything. Think of a picture or even a video, put it on there and we'll be able to predict the tags and should suggest these similar images. And um, we have all kinds of really cool things coming. Like for example, if you really want to recognize these celebrity faces, we've got that coming towards you. We have different facial recognition. We have custom training. We have so many different things that you can do. And I'm going to explain some of it to you so that way you can see what you can do with our API. So um, the Clarify API has four REST endpoints and a bunch of API clients. And now this is a big so far because right now there's a few uh, public ones. There's some different ones that we're slowly releasing over time to different hackathons. Um, but these are the ones that are on the website at this moment. So the endpoints are token, where you can get an access token. Now when you actually go on the Clarify uh, developer website, which is developer.clarify.com, you can create an account, log in, and then go to applications. And you can make as many applications as you want and then let's just say I go to this one that I made. I have a client ID, a client secret, and then it generates an access token here. Now let's just say you want access tokens um, over time because they expire after a certain amount of time. I think ours expire about every day or every other day. Um, you can just call the access token endpoint token and you'll get a new access token with your client ID and uh, client secret. There's also info, and that gets you current info about the state of the API and the user. So you can actually ping the info endpoint to find out if your access token has expired, which is very useful as you're trying to figure out how you're going to organize your application. There's also the feedback endpoint. Now let's just say you put in a bunch of images and they give you some tags that are actually incorrect. What you can do is with this feedback endpoint, you can say, hey, this one is actually wrong, this one is wrong, but this one is right, and you should add this one. You can hit that feedback endpoint and continually improve not only our technologies, but also what it returns to you. So it's just continuously helping us and just improving the results, which is the whole point of machine learning. And then my favorite endpoint is tag, um, and that gives you tags for a given image. Now, um, you can give it an image URL or you can give it um, an image on your computer. And I'll actually show you how you can do that really quick with um, a curl request. All right, so let's just say you go to developer.clarify.com and then you go to API reference and then you click tagging. If you'll notice right here, we have a bunch of different curl requests that you can actually write in so that you can get the information that you want about a given image. And so you'll notice that it requests an access token. So instead of going through the whole process of calling an access token, I'll just get one really quick for this demo app right here. And I'm going to take this right here and stick it in there. And then to get my access token, so I can take my access token and then just stick it right in here in the curl request. And if you'll notice, we already have an image URL right here. If you want to see that image for yourself, I will pull it up right here for you. It's just a picture from the New York subway, nothing too fancy. Um, so when I actually call this curl request, you'll notice that you get this big response. So first of all, the status code is okay, which you'll want that because you want everything to be okay, and that all the images in the request has completed successfully. Now you can actually tag multiple images at once. This is just one example to show you what you can do, and if you'll notice, it has all of these results for train, railroad, station, rail, transportation, platform, railway speed, departure, business, all kinds of stuff, which is really cool. 
and then it also has all of these different numbers right here for the probability of each tag. And so I'll show you this view that's a little bit prettier. If you'll notice, it has the probs right here, and then it also has the results right here. So as you're starting to figure out what uh, you're looking for, you'll want a probability that is really high, like for example, this is 0.999, so wait a minute, that means it's definitely a train, um, which it is. And uh, as it gets lower, that's a little less likely. And so we return to you 20 tags, the 20 most relevant tags. Now there's all kinds of really cool things that people have done with this so far and that you could do too. One of my favorite examples is there's this one team that made an integration with Instagram where you uploaded a photo and um, based on the photo it uploaded, first of all it generated tags and it checked which of those tags would be most viral and added some that were related to those tags and then it tagged your image based on that and so you could get the most viral tags for that image. And that's just a small example. I've seen people do things like with Pokemon and with finding cool beaches nearby and taking location and image data. There's all kinds of stuff that you could do, which is really fun. So there's lots of things that you can do with these tags. Um, now we have a number of clients, so you don't have to use the rest stuff if you don't want to, or if you do, some people have made our clients and different uh, languages like that. We have some that we made for you. So there's iOS and Android starters, and those just help you get started and give you some sample images and views and stuff so that way you can really get going with the API with iOS and Android. Um, there's a Python client, which is so easy to use. You just do a pip install on the client, um, and then from the client you import the Clarify API, you create the object, and then it's just a matter of opening an image for that, which is really nice and quick, and in four lines of code you can get everything that you need. Um, there's a Java client as well, which also works for Android, and it's just a matter of um, importing the library and then just creating um, a results uh, object out of the Clar Clarify client. I'm going to re-say that. Um, it's just a matter of importing the packages and creating a Clarify client object and then just getting the results from that by making a recognition request. Um, and then there's also a Node.js client. What? the only real dev language. Um, you can just require the clarify node.js um, and then initialize the API and then tag the URL and you'll get the result right away. It's super easy to use um, and definitely tagging is one of my favorite endpoints but there is this one feature that's really cool and that's called custom training. Now custom training is really teaching your computer. Now I showed you that picture of Beyonce and Jay-Z earlier and let's just say you have tons of pictures of Beyonce. You're a Beyonce fanatic. I understand you. Now, let's just say, hey, I want to make it so that way it doesn't just say this is a woman, this is a singer, this is someone with long hair making a facial expression. I want it to know this is Beyonce. What you can do with custom training is you can give it positive examples and negative examples and then train it. And then no matter what you give it, it'll start to understand what it's teaching you. So for, or for example, let's just say I give it 10 pictures of Beyonce. I could give it two pictures of Beyonce and it would start recognizing her. And then for negative images, I would give her, I would give her. And then for negative examples, I would give it a picture of Rihanna, a picture of Nicki Minaj, a picture of Taylor Swift, a bunch of people who are not Beyonce. They aren't the queen bee. Now, it has these positive examples, it has these negative examples. Now, you can call predict on it. Once you've trained the image, the images, you can call predict and say, I'm going to give it a picture of baby blue, let's just say. It'll predict if that's Beyonce or not and give you a, a confidence level of what that actually, the, what that image is to that concept. And it's great and it's crazy accurate. And um, you can do all kinds of really interesting things with it. I've seen people who have made a Tinder app that actually automates Tinder by it slowly understands your preferences, making positive examples the ones you swipe right and negative examples the one you swipe left, and then it starts to swipe for you because it starts to understand what you like and what you don't like. I've seen people who have trained different cars where you train a bunch of different Ferraris, um, but you negatively train Hondas and Toyotas so it only gives you Ferraris when you want to predict different cars like that. You can train anything you want. You could train pictures of Spider-Man to be a web developer Pun, and you can do all kinds of really interesting things with that and we do have clients for that as well the iOS and Android starters that I told you about those work with custom training as well and then we also have a Python client and a JavaScript client and I'm going to show you just really quick a project that I worked on 
Um, and you can actually find it. There's our Clarify GitHub that has a bunch of our starters and a bunch of our clients. And then I just made it on my personal account. And you can go to github.com slash Cassidy slash Clarify Car Trainer. And I can show you how to run it on here. But basically, you call positive and negative functions. Um, I made a sample positive and sample negatives function if you want to just use this out of the box. And then you call train. Because you can train it on a bunch of images, then let's just say you want to give it more examples. You add those images and then you just train it one more time and call the train function. And then you just call the predict function and it tells you if it's right. So I'm going to open up my demo really quick. So I made this demo right here in his Cassidy's car shop where we specialize in non-sucky cars ever since now. Um, so basically, I want Cassidy's car shop to only do luxury cars because I like style. Um, so I trained 10 images and you'll notice right here, they're all Ferraris. Um, I could have done Lamborghinis if I wanted to, but I stuck with Ferraris for now. These are the 10 images that I trained positively and for images I trained negatively, I just gave it 10 different cars I gave it a Toyota, gave it a Honda. You can do as little as one or two images, but the more you give it, the more it understands it. So I gave it a bunch of Ferraris of different colors and that sort of thing. So let's just say I want to sell a car in Cassidy's car shop. We'll find out if certain cars are qualified. So I just went to the subreddit for Ferraris and this Ferrari looks really pretty. So I've copied in this car URL. I like it, so hopefully it'll be accepted into the shop. And. Yes, this car is worthy, yay! Um, let's just say, oh, I do kind of want to try a Honda because who knows, maybe Cassidy's car shop will find this random car worthy. So I'm going to stick this car image in here and we'll see if it accepts the Honda. Nope, get this car out of my face. That's right, Cassidy's car shop. You truly are a luxury and a treasure to us all. So anyway, I just trained some pretty simple images and I'll just show you the code really quick so that way you can understand what I'm doing. So I made a new clarify object, and if you'll notice, I just stuck in my actual access token. Use that, you can use that, excuse me. I just stuck in my access token. You can use the token endpoint if you want to, to actually get one, but this is kind of just a demo, so don't worry about it. Um, I imported the clarifybasic.js, which is just the JavaScript client that we have on GitHub. Um, stuck it in there, created a clarify object, and then I have these different functions. I have positive, which, which is just clarify.positive. Then it has a callback um, that has the promise resolved or re rejected. Negative images, so that's where I put the Hondas and the Toyotas, that sort of thing. And then train, so it trains the concept Ferrari. If you'll notice in the previous ones, it has um, Ferrari in, in those single quotes there. That's the concept that I'm training. So I could call positive on anything. I could train Hondas. I could train whatever. Um, but this is just the concept I'm training right now. Um, and then predict. And so once everything is positive and negative and you've trained it, you can call predict. And um, the callback says if it's positive, then um, uh, which means if it's positive as in the object was properly predicted, then it checks if the score. So the score is just uh, the confidence level. Um, if the score is negative, then that means that's not a Ferrari, so that's where that get that car out of my face comes from. And then um, if it's a positive result, so it is a Ferrari, then yay, that car is worthy of the shop. And then that second function right there is the promise rejected. And the promise resolved and rejected is just console.logging, nothing too fancy. Um, and I added a bunch of different things. I added a sample positive, which just calls the positive function, just so that way um, it was easy for you to see what I was doing. Um, but yeah, it's honestly just those four functions and I just attached those to the different buttons in there and it was pretty straightforward. Um, there's a lot that you can do with custom training and there's a lot of options for you out there so I highly recommend experimenting with it, checking out what you want to do um, because you could really make some cool stuff. There are some really cool things that you can do. Um, there's a dating website out there that uses us to make sure there's no nudity in the photos people upload. There's some hotel sites that make sure that there's good views in the hotels that you're booking. There's um, some photo apps that make sure that photos that are similar are grouped together. There's, there's so many different options that you can do custom training and tagging and all these things with. And um, just kind of ha get creative with it and let us know uh, what you're doing. Um, if you do want to let us know, you can go to developer.clarify.com or you can tweet us at clarifydev. 
And um, I'd be happy to see your projects and kind of help you out if you need it. Um, feel free to ping us at any time, and we'd love to talk to you. Um, I'm Cassidy from Clarify, and talk to you soon.